Hello ladies and gents, so this video is for anybody who's in business, whether you own your own company or whether you're just starting out, this is going to be a really interesting five minutes and what I'm going to do is tell you a brief summary of the book Good to Great by Jim Collins. Now this is a fantastic business book and something which I've read three times now and this time whilst I was reading it I decided to take down some notes. So here I've got a two to three page summary of everything that I've learned and I just want to share this with you to save you about six hours of reading the book. So I'm just going to fire away. This is very much just improvised. Um, so hopefully it's going to come across well and you're going to gain some insights as well. So first of all, great leaders. Let's talk about great leaders. And in the book... One of the things that stands out is that great leaders take accountability for their own actions. They look in the mirror and say, I am the leader, I am responsible for everything that goes on in this company. And then, when the company is successful, they give credit to other people. A good leader takes accountability and appreciates and lets other people in the business know how valuable and how important they are to the company's success. Whereas in a bad leader, a bad CEO, or somebody who's got a huge ego, will look in the mirror and take all the credit. This is my doing. This is why the company's been successful. Without me, this company would be nothing. That's a bad leader, and it talks about that in the book. Another great insight. Don't motivate people, hire motivated people. So look for people who are already driven, people that get up early, people that look after the health and fitness, people that are always reading, writing, learning, listening to podcast, listening to podcasts, investing money in courses to develop themselves. Look for those type of people that you want in your organization. Okay, I'm just flicking through this. Something which I'm going to use in my future business meetings with companies, potential employers, etc., is the Stockdale Paradox. So this is remaining positive. So knowing what vision and what you want to strive for in your company, having a clear objective, being optimistic and having the belief that you can do it, you can achieve it. But at the same time, being realistic and being in the here and now. So it's having a big grand vision and being positive about that, but at the same time being realistic and realizing this is the situation now, this is what we're gonna to have to face. So it's basically being optimistic, but also realistic at the same time, rather than just living in the clouds and being too positive, and rather than being down in the dumps and too negative, it's that happy medium where you, you, you confront some reality. This is obvious, okay? But I do think, even though it's obvious, sometimes the most obvious things we forget. And that is making sure that you're passionate about what you're doing. There's no point in being in business if you don't give a shit about what you're doing. And great companies are passionate. Whether they're passionate about the product or the culture or making a difference in the world, you have to be passionate. Otherwise, you're not going to become a great company. Good companies aren't run by just a leader alone, a tyrant leader. Because what happens is if that great leader who's, where the company is so dependent on this person, what happens when they leave? Imagine having Cristiano Ronaldo in your football team who scores all the goals and is largely responsible for the success of the team, but then he gets injured or he moves to a different club. What happens then? You know, great companies aren't built with one person. They're built with the culture, built with a team. Now, this is another theme that comes, you know, it goes through the book, throughout the book. It's very consistent. And that's making sure that you've got the right players in the right position. So let's take football, for example, or soccer, if you're American. You've got 11 players on the pitch, you've got a goalkeeper, you've got midfielders, defenders, strikers. Now the goalkeeper's job is to save the ball, to stop it from going in the back of the net. The defenders are there to protect the goalkeeper. The midfielders are there to help the defenders and to help the attackers. 
and the attackers are the ones who are trying to put the ball in the back of the net. Now, too many companies, they allocate roles to people and they put people in the wrong positions. You wouldn't put a goalkeeper up front trying to score your goals because that's not what he's good at. So making sure that you have set specific positions and you put the right people who can do that job in the position. Again, sounds common sense, but how many companies do it? Not many. The flywheel concept. Now this is super important. It's knowing what your company's big vision is, what you want to achieve, the difference that you want to make in the world. Making sure that everybody's clear on that vision. And then the flywheel, getting everybody pushing this flywheel in the right direction, slowly. Everybody moving towards the same vision. And over time, one week builds momentum, two weeks, six months, one year, and gradually it builds so much momentum that you've now got a business which is working and which is functioning. Not of one big grand gesture, it's repeated daily pushes of this wheel. That's, that's a fantastic way of looking at it. The last couple of things that I want to talk about is the illusion, that's, you know, I'm going to reverse that actually, let me, let me start again, is that people think success comes overnight, when what people don't actually see is the hours and hours, the years and years that go into it, prior to it being a success. So people only see the tip of the iceberg to see the company being a success, seeing the player, you know, playing for Real Madrid, being the top goal scorer, being one of the best players in the world. But what they don't see is the 20 years leading up to that, the early training sessions, the setbacks, the struggles, all which make people successful. And some of the examples are Sam Walton, who was the founder of Walmart, the huge retail chain in America. Now he started with one store and it took him seven years before he got two stores. Then 25 years, he got 38 stores. And then in the last 30 years, what 1970 to 2000, he had over 3000 stores and over $150 billion in revenue. Now again, Look at years one to seven. Seven years before he got a second store. That's a lot of days. That's a lot of struggles. That's a lot of ups and downs. Again, people look at the tip of the iceberg. They don't look at the root and, and, and what's attributed, what's built, what, what's allowing Sorry, the tip of the iceberg to stand. It's all the core underneath it. And the last thing which I want to finish with, which I think is really powerful, is that Dave Packard, one of the founders of HP, the, the, the huge software company, despite being worth billions, he wasn't driven solely by money. Money is insignificant in the grand scheme of things. It's having a deeper passion. That's not saying that money isn't important and you shouldn't want money, you know, that's fine. But the great companies aren't driven by money and profits. They're driven about achieving, achieving their objective, which is helping people, delivering a high class service, standing for something more than just making money you know which is shallow when you when you actually think about it it's having a greater purpose and dave packard when he died he left 5.6 billion to charity he lived he lived in a simple house and at his funeral there was no mention about how much he was worth or how big a status he cultivated and how popular he was his picture, his funeral picture, was him sat on a tractor in farming clothes and on his plaque, on his funeral plaque, it said 19, David Packard, 1912 to 1996, rancher. No mention of being this great big businessman. And I think that's really important. It's, you know, money and wealth and success are really sought after in our society nowadays. But are they really the most important things in life? Character, values, morals, they're more important. And it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what business you're in. Knowing yourself and the, the things which make you tick are far more important than, than achieving, you know, zeros at the end of your bank balance. And again, I thought that was a really interesting way of looking at it. Too many people are just solely driven by money and they forget about what they do or why they do it. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I've doubled the time that I said I was going to take on this, but sometimes I just get carried away. I'm extremely passionate about what I do. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed hearing about my insights from Good to Great. 
I would still strongly encourage you to check out the book. It is fantastic. Thank you so much for watching. To anybody that's in business, I, I really wish you the best of luck.